welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Odroid M1S single board computer. This came out about 9 or 10 months ago now, and it's very interesting because it's only sold as a kit. And so in this box we don't just have the Odroid M1S SBC, we also have a power supply and a case, and the board also has 64 gigabytes of the MMC flash storage. And so everything we need to get the SBC up and running is in the box. And prices start up $49 for a four gigabyte model and $59 for an eight gigabyte model. And I think that's pretty good for everything you need to get the SBC up and running. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our Odroid M1S, which is a 4GB model. And if we can turn it over, we can see it was purchased with a UK plug for its power adapter. And indeed, I got this board from Odroid Co UK, where it cost me £53 plus taxes, or £63.60, which is somewhat of a premium given the dollar prices from Hard Kernel that I mentioned earlier. And I should also note that all the prices I've mentioned so far are for an M1S without GPIO connectors, which cost an extra $3 or £4.80. So let's open up the box. Very simple unboxing, I think. Couldn't be simpler than that. And this must be the uh, power adapter plug. This will be a UK plug, I'm sure. There it is. And then we have also in here the board itself. Oh, there's the board or the case at least, and oh no, the, the board is in the case. I should have guessed that, shouldn't I? Here is the board in the case. We'll get them out in a second. This must be the power adapter, which will go with the plug we just looked at. This is a five volt, three amp USB-C adapter, which will mate with the plug. And then the board itself in the case. Can I get it out of the case? Is it screwed in? Oh, I think it's just snapped in. Let's me try and get it out. There we are, I've got it out of the case. And I think it's also, is it secured in the case? No, we can get it out like that. There we are. A new single board computer. You know I always like a new single board computer. And uh, I'm sure you're interested in how big it is relative to other things. So let's bring in, this is a Raspberry Pi. You can see it's a little bit uh, longer and just generally bigger than a Raspberry Pi. And given that this is the M1S, I think we should take a second to compare it with the Odroid M1, which I have over here, and which is a more expensive board costing $70 for a four gigabyte version and $90 for eight gigabytes, with these prices not including a power supply or any storage. So let's bring in the smaller and less expensive M1S. Quite a different SBC in many ways, as you can see. Not least these boards are based on different systems on a chip. We have specifically an RK3568B2 on the M1 and an RK3566 on the M1S, which is slightly less powerful. And as we can see, the M1S has got less connectivity, not least it hasn't got the SATA port we find on the Odroid M1, and which is one of the reasons I really like the Odroid M1. But uh, here, of course, we're focusing on the M1S, which is a nice little SBC for a decent price and should be well suited to many embedded applications. As we can see, the M1S comes with a pre-fitted heatsink, beneath which its RK3566 SoC has four ARM Cortex-A55 cores clocked at up to 1.8 GHz, together with an ARM Mali G52 GPU and a 0.8 TOPS MPU. Also hidden under the heatsink is our RAM, here four gigabytes of low power DDR4, although, as I've said, an 8GB board is also available. And regardless of the RAM, all M1S boards have got 64GB of EMMC flash storage. In addition, if we turn the board over, I'm sure it won't mind, underneath we find an M.2 slot. This will take a 2280 NVMe SSD, and they even include the screw, which is, which is great to see. And the interface here is PCIe 2.1 one lane. So not terribly fast, but it's great to have an M.2 slot. So it'll take an SSD directly on the board. We don't have a PCIe interface that requires 
and other board to take the SSD and I'm particularly pleased to see it takes a 2280 SSD rather than the more expensive for smaller models. And whilst we're taking a look at the base of the board, we should also note the UART connector and the real-time clock battery connector. If we turn the board back the right way up, I'm sure that will make it a little bit happier. And we take a look at the front edge, we discover a Type-A USB 3 port, a full-size HDMI connector supporting 4K at up to 60 frames a second, a Type-A USB 2 port, a USB-C port for powering the board, and on the right end, a gigabit Ethernet connector. Spinning 90 to the main short edge, in this shot we can again see the connectors underneath like UART, but on the top we have got a micro USB 2.0 OTG connector, a micro SD card slot, just here an M.2 indicator LED, and on the end, a four-lane VIPI DSi connector for connecting an external display. And it's worth noting that Hard Kernel have a really nice and reasonably priced 8-inch LCD panel available for this board. On the second lung edge, we then have pads that can accommodate a 40-pin and a 14-pin GPIO connector. And as I mentioned earlier, you can buy these boards with headers pre-soldered if you want to, and the 14-pin connector here offers various things, including power, UART, and an extra USB 2 connector. And the 40-pin connector here is pretty much what you get with GPIO on, for example, a Raspberry Pi. Finally, if we rotate again to the second short edge, there's nothing to see here, so let's return to a shot of the top of the board. And so, there we are, the Odroid M1S. And the only thing I've not mentioned is that there's no onboard Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, with Hard Kernel as always suggesting that buyers use one of their USB dongles if this functionality is required. But uh, here I'm happy to go with Ethernet, so let's see how this board performs. Greetings! I've now got the board back in its case and all connected up, and I do like the way that this case is designed so it can be mounted to something else. This is very much an SBC to be used in embedded projects, things like that. I do like that. And on its first boot, a new M1S should run an OS installer that's been imaged to its EMMC in the factory. Note that this is different to the firmware installers we now see on many SBCs, such as the Raspberry Pi network installer, the OWOW installer on new Cardas SBCs, RubyOS on some Radzer SBCs, and even the Pettiboot installer included on the Odroid M1. All of these are included in an SBC's firmware and download an operating system. But what we have here on the M1S is a first boot installer that runs locally from its EMMC to save us the trouble of installing from microSD or via USB. So let's try it out. Let's bring in the video display, which is currently black. All the wonders of modern technology. And I'll turn on the power. There we go. And hopefully something will happen. Oh yes, that was very fast, wasn't it? We've got the option to install Android version 11, Ubuntu with a GNOME desktop, or Ubuntu server. And we're going to go here for number two, Ubuntu like that. So let's press enter. And we'll select the device to flash, which is clearly going to be that. And there we are, things are happening rather exciting. So, as usual in my videos, we will use a magic of filmmaking to speed on through. And there we are, it's finished. Do we want to reboot now? I think we will go yes. And in theory, we should now boot into Ubuntu. Oh, we've just seen hard kernel on the screen now, that's exciting. And yes, we are booting into Ubuntu. I seem to be doing that quite a bit these days on the channel. But uh, as usual, we'll speed on through this first boot. And there we are, all ready to log in. So I'll just press uh, enter for the Odroid account. The password I'm sure is Odroid, which if I've typed it correctly, looks like I have, should deliver us to an Ubuntu desktop. And uh, here we are with the usual first run thingy. We will next on that. We will send our information, I think that's fine won't turn location services on, we're ready to go. 
And as you probably noticed from the desktop background, this is Ubuntu 20.04, which is a bit old, although it's still supported until April 2025, and it's clearly working no problems at all here on the Odroid M1S. So as usual, I'll now take a look around and do a few scaling changes, and I'll come back to you after that. Now, here I am back again, and I've got a power meter on the screen, as you can see, and we'll boot up the system so you can see a clean boot, and you can see how much power it's using. I'm just going to plug the adapter into the Odroid like that. And we've now got to obviously some power use. It's going up as we would expect, and uh, things are booting. And I'll let it boot in real time so you can get a feel of how rapidly this machine boots. And my experience with it over the period of time that's passed since I last spoke to you only a few seconds ago in video is that this is a nice, stable, low power Ubuntu system. It's a little bit laggy here and there as you'll see when we get through, but it, it certainly works. Let's just uh, log in. There we go. And again, we'll let it uh, take its time to uh, get on through. It's a nice purple screen, isn't it? Nice having a purple screen. You can look at it and go, oh, that's a nice purple color. Who says I'm just spouting drivel until the system has booted? I am. But now the system has booted. We're back to the focal fossa. I do like this desktop image. I think it's the nicest one they ever had with a, an Ubuntu distro. Anyway, let's just show you how things are working. If I click on files, you see it comes up. But as I mentioned a second ago, it's a little bit laggy, but it's not, it's not terrible. Perfectly usable Ubuntu system, totally silent, not using much power, as we can see on the power meter, about 2.3 watts roughly idle is certainly not bad. Let's launch a LibreOffice Writer, which will come up again pretty straightforwardly. Come on, you can do it, LibreOffice Writer. There it is. We'll do our normal hello like that and uh, put it into large letters. I don't know why I do this. It just makes me happy. There we are. So this clearly works. As a writer, I could survive perfectly happily using this system a lot of the time. And of course, I've got to show you a web browser and particularly streaming media playback, which is not good on this system. It does not have GPU acceleration here in the browser. But if I don't show you, you'll say, why didn't you show us? But it'll get to a web page without any problems. A light site like Explaining Computers works very nicely. Heavier sites, though, will take some time to come in. But uh, let's go to YouTube. I think it's probably sitting just there. It is. So we'll let my test clip load in. And here we are, after a lot of coaxing, it is now theoretically playing, although as we can see, whilst we have progress on the uh, time bar, we don't have a lot of actual activity on the screen, and we're only here in 720p. This is not a board on which, at least in Ubuntu, you're going to be playing streaming media. And of course, that's not what it's created for. Let's just get rid of this. Let's uh, put it out of its misery. I could see, for example, the desktop Ubuntu image here being used if you had the M1S connected to a touchscreen that I mentioned earlier, and being used as something like a control console. It should work very well for that purpose. And clearly, it's pretty efficient in terms of power, as we can see on the power meter that's been on the screen throughout. And you might be wondering at the maximum power use, so let's just go down and we'll bring up, for example, uh, the terminal, which is hiding away somewhere here. Where is it? In utilities, there we are. Let's find the terminal and launch the terminal. And in the terminal, Come on, terminal, there you are. We've got a sysbench command waiting to stress out the CPU cores. This will just factor prime numbers for a very long time. And we'll prove it's stressing them out by bringing up, which we haven't done yet, the system monitor. Also sitting here in uh, utilities, I think. There it is. And that will show us here in a second that all of our CPU cores, I imagine, are, oh, yes, stressed out to 100%. They're working very hard indeed. And even when they are working very hard indeed, as you can see, we're only using 3.9 watts of power, which is uh, pretty impressive. And if I uh, close that down, our power use will drop as soon as we close the terminal. Yes, it's gone down to about uh, 2.4, 2.5 watts. And if you're wondering, it can be even lower. I think HDMI uses a bit of power here. So if I just go to uh, lock there, which will turn off a display like that, we're now drawing about 1.9 watts, maybe 2 watts. It's oscillating between the two. But clearly, the uh, Odroid M1S has very frugal power requirements.
Greetings, here I am back again and I've now fitted an NVMe SSD to the M1S and I've also inserted a micro SD card so we can do some storage speed tests. So let's start with an LSBLK here in the terminal, list block devices like that, so we can see all of the storage now on the system, which comprises the internal EMMC up here and then our micro SD card and the NVMe SSD. And if we bring up the HD parameters speed test first for the internal MMC and uh, see how that does. Don't worry about the invalid argument there. It can't find the name of the drive, but it won't stop it doing the test properly. And there we are. We've got a speed of about 158 megabytes a second for the internal MMC, which, which is not too bad. But let's also find the speed of the micro SD card. This is a SanDisk Extreme Pro card, so this is very much a test of the speed of the interface. The card will be, I'm sure, performing better than this. 65 megabytes a second, that's not too bad. We've seen better, we've seen worse. That's reasonable for a micro SD card on a single board computer. But finally, of course, we expect far more from the uh, NVMe SSD, NVMe 0N1, like that. What's this going to give us over its PCIe 2.1 single lane interface? Well, the answer is 370 megabytes a second. That's not too bad. So overall, I'm quite impressed with the storage speed test results on this $50 single board computer. Right, here we are now booting up again, this time into Android. And I installed Android by downloading the factory installer image from the Hard Kernel website, flashing it with Belena Etcher to a micro SD card, and then booting up the board from the micro SD card, which allows us to rerun the factory installer. And this time I selected Android, and as you can see, with extra storage fitted, the option did exist to flash to the NVMe drive. And I understand that booting from NVMe is possible here on the M1S. But here I put Android onto the EMMC, and if we go back to our boot, here we are arriving in Android on the system. And this is very much a development Android image. We look at what's included. This is not intended for end users. There's no Play Store, there's no YouTube. But uh, there are things like this, for example, kiosk demo, which is a demo of a kiosk. Can we uh, click on things here? Presumably um, we can. It doesn't seem to do very much, but it shows the principle of a, a kiosk running on this system, which is obviously a, a nice idea, isn't it? And uh, let's go back to what else is here. There's, in fact, there's not a lot else, but the one thing I did find which actually worked very nicely, I went here into Lightning, and you'll see here I've been watching an Explaining Computers video. Here it is, look. That's, this is my channel trailer, if I can just convince it to go full screen. And here we now are playing 1080p video full screen in Android here on the Odroid M1S, and we have no drop frames. There were a few when it started. I played it a few times to get it coming up full screen, as you can see. But now it's playing. It's absolutely rock solid. Beautiful 1080p video playback. And to be honest, I'm not that surprised. We always know there are far better drivers for the chips on which SBCs are based in Android than there are in a desktop Linux distros, because these chips are made for Android in the first place. And uh, this clearly shows the potential of the Odroid M1S, which like so many ARM-based single board computers, is often held back by its software support rather than the hardware. So there we are, the Odroid M1S. And I've just said it really, it's another ARM SBC with great potential once the software arrives to release that potential. Although I do think we should congratulate Hard Kernel for launching a new SBC at this price point. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.